Darby, hello. It's literally the last day of April 2024. What have I got in front of me? It is no other than the Microtic CRS 310-HG plus 2S plus IN. What in the world am I talking about? Well, this is a Microtic cloud switch. Uh, this is the unboxing, but please do stick around for the commentary, which comes afterwards. Let's get along with the unboxing then. So it's uh, in a brown paper pa packaging, just like all my critic stuff I'm aware of. Oh yes. Now, there's uh, presumably no secrets in here. I've got a tiny little manual. Mr. Microtic. Let's get this box out of the way, shall we? Mr. Microtic. A UK power adapter, since I'm in UK for now. And, 19 inch rack mount. So, it's the UK power adapter. Now, my critics have got a pretty much standard set of power adapters that they use all over the place. And this is one that's white and it says uh, 1.3 amps, 24 volts. So, normally you can use these adapters on many different types of equipment. Some mounting screws, I guess, for this 19 inch rack. Um, and skimpy set of instructions because if you buy a microtech you need to know what you're doing and the unit itself now again please stick around for the commentary I will say let's compare it to the size of a Leatherman it's pretty small isn't it I hadn't actually checked the size before ordering it's a lot I'm pleased to say it's a lot smaller than I had anticipated there we go now again stick around for the commentary but let's look at the uh, look at the facts of the situation front mounted power supply to me not ideal a usb socket i am going to put a large usb key in there eight 2.5 gig ethernet ports stick around for the commentary as to why that's important and two sfp plus sockets into which you can put things like this optical uh, transceiver. So um, that's the unboxing. Again, stick around for the commentary. So a quick look around the side. I believe this is a fan assisted unit. Okay. <laughs> There's a fan, a more convincing fan hole. There's an earthing strap point here. Some wall mount slots, should you need them. Again, as per normal legislation, uh, don't mind showing the passwords because that will be changed. As, a, as, a, as of the end of April 2024, all European devices, sorry, all UK devices, need to have non-trivial passwords and Microtech's been doing that for a while now. So that's the Microtech CRS310. 8G 2S IN cloud switch. And since it's called CRS, I'm going to call it a cloud router switch. On to the talk. Uh, Dari, so it is the end of April 2024. I'm here in the study with my very capable assistant. No, <laughs> you're looking the other way. Um, so, we are here to discuss the Microtech CRS 310-8G 2S plus IN, which in the UK I've just purchased for about £190 GBP. Uh, I've done it through Amazon because, although it's coming from Wi-Fi Stock, which is a well-known UK retailer, and possibly could be a little bit cheaper directly to Wi-Fi Stock, with Amazon, since it's a prime purchase, it can be returned should there be a cock up. And that, I guess, is the subject of this whole conversation. So why am I using it? Why is it interesting? Um, and I'll talk about that. So I'll just show you the gadget itself. Here we are. So there we are. That's the gadget itself. And as you can see, it's got eight. <laughs> Maybe, no one, L listen, stop, stop it. Come on, go. Anyway, it's got eight ports here, which are two and a half gig ports. 
It's got a power supply on the front, which is a bit annoying because you'll see a wire. Um, and it's got these two SFP plus ports. Now, the reason for using this is that at the moment in the home, uh, I've got some props here, as well as some of the web pages, we have a fiber internet connection. So um, this whole conversation, I guess, is dedicated to, well, I'm a systems guy who does a bit of networking, um, but um, if you have a fiber internet connection, especially if you've actually got fiber to the home and you're fortunate enough to actually have direct fiber in, which we are, very unusual in the UK, um, how do you distribute that fast internet and how do you have a, a very fast infrastructure for your home? Now at the moment, um, and this has gone back, let's say 10 years, I've been hoping that the whole world is going to be move, moving towards 10 gigabit ethernet. And this route is the purchase of this router is to capitulate and say it's never going to happen. So in fact, I can go back 10 years to house minus three, <laughs> whereby we actually paid for expensive 10 gigabit e wired ethernet e or copper ethernet in the whole home. Um, I finally come to the conclusion that 10 gigabit ethernet is never going to catch on. My seven year old server, which is over there, um, has 10 gigabit ethernet and we've had a 10 gigabit ethernet between our server and our backup NAS for the last f five or six years now. And I've been hoping that 10 gigabit e copper ethernet would proliferate, but it hasn't. In the last couple of years, we've had seen a proliferation of what I would say is 2.5 gigab gigabit ethernet, which is 2.5 gigabit copper ethernet. And again, let's go to Mr. Internet and see if I can go to the browser. So that's what we've bought. So if you see here, we've got eight 2.5 gigabit ports and two SFP plus ports. So you've got SFP port, you know that's a, a gigabit port, SFP plus port can support higher speeds. So into that port, you can plug things like this. So here we are. Again, the prices have come right down. So these are optical uh, transceivers. So this will plug into an SFP plus port and they're the optical, two optical ends and some more, well, okay, it's too late. The, the, the cat's eating my dinner, literally. <laughs> um, right, so, Literally, you can buy optical cables now for less than £10, and that can connect from the SFP Plus port to another unit with an SFP Plus. So this port on this server here, uh, if it's got 10 gigabits, if you've got 10 gigabit server, for example, could connect directly into that uh, if it's got an SFP Plus port at the back of the server, or likely, more likely a copper 10 gigabit port, meaning to say that you'd go from 10 gigabit um, copper ethernet with a standard like cable co connector that looks like that. And then you'd need to buy one of these that connects you to a copper ethernet in this device. And that's about 60 quid. So the reason why 2.5 gigabit is taking off is because you're getting consumer units now which have a Ethernet socket, which is 2.5 gigabits, which so you don't have you don't have to buy you don't you don't get consumer units which have got a hole like this. They just have a, a 2.5 Ethernet socket here, and so you don't need to buy this expensive or comparatively expensive transceiver, which goes to which goes to 10 gigabit Ethernet. So I think 10 gigabit Ethernet in the home is basically dead. I think that. The only point in having, for let's say, IT savvy or network centric smart homes is to have 10 gigabit interconnects. So the idea is now I'm going to use this unit. I'm going to have 10, 10 gigabit coming into the home here. But the idea is to use this as the boundary router. OK, and the idea is that 10 gigabit is going to come in here. I'm going to have this, which will link to other units. So this could be an interlink to another switch. And MicroTik switches often have SFP plus ports. So I can link between MicroTik units with 10 gigabits. But 
for the actual interconnect to actual servers, I, I resign myself, even though some of my servers can take 10 gigabits, it's just not happening. It just really is not happening. So I've resigned myself to have a backbone in the home now, upgrading the backbone for one gigabit ethernet to 10, sorry, to 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And this is a good device, I believe, that I'm gonna try it out. Now, the only thing that was worrying me is that this device is a, it's called a cloud switch. It's not called a cloud router switch as such, if you look it up on the, on the microtip, even though it's listed CRS. Uh, and so when you, when you choose a microtip unit, what I would always do is look at the, the power of the CPU and look at the benchmark capabilities of the units. Let, let me show you what I mean. So you go into the microtip website, I've gone to this switch, and if you scroll down, you'll see you've got test results and you've also got specifications. So what I always do now is I look at the CPU and you'll notice that this switch unit or this router switch unit has got a very lowly powered switch. Sorry, a lowly powered CPU. It's got a switch chip, which is separate. But if you look at the CPU, it's, oh, that's code pilot, stop that. It's pretty pathetic. It's got an 800 megahertz two core CPU and it currently got as the boundary router this device, which is of a similar price, but believe it or not, although it's several years old, this has got a four core ARM32 unit uh, running it up to 1900 megahertz. So ironically, and this is what I'm worried about, this has currently got the home uh, fiber coming in here and we distribute outward at one gigabit to uh, home and secure networks. So we have the one, we have the optical uh, SFP plus internet coming in, fiber internet coming in here, and outward we have this. We don't even use the, the wireless that's handled with separate units. So this is kind of the boundary router, and this boundary router has got different firewall rules, etc. So this is used as a router, meaning to say that the the network that's coming in here is completely different to the network that's going out here. And so if we go to this device, the question is, what have we got? We've only got this 800 megahertz unit. Now, if you use the unit as a, a switch, it means to say that you're not using it, let's say as an internet connection, but you're using it that all the devices on this unit are on the same network. And if you look at the OSI network model, again, I'm not a network person, so, there may be areas in this conversation, we just have to run with it. But if you look at the OSI model, you've got the physical layer at the bottom, then you've got the data, then you've got the network layer. Now switches work at the data layer. Um, and if you're switching, you're switching using the MAC address. And this device, I completely can understand, can switch at 10 gigabits when it's switching at the MAC address level. But at the network level, which is the IP address level, can it switch fast enough? So the idea is I want to use this as a router, not just as a switch. If I was using this as a switch, I have no doubt it's going to work quick enough. But if I'm using it as a router, the internet is coming in here with a certain IP address. We have a static IP address. Um, and then we have to convert that to the network of the home, the 192.168.x network, okay, which we have several. So then it's having to route between this address here and do network address translation or masquerading as it's called in the Unix world, uh, Linux world. So I have to masquerade between the IP address that's coming in here. Oh, that's not supposed to happen, is it? Um, and the, um, the IP addresses that are on these, on these, on this, on these, on these ports. So the question is, is it going to be fast enough? I just don't know. So as a switch, fine. As a router, we're going to see. So that's where we've got to. We've done the unboxing. I've got to plug it in, update router OS on this box. We're up to 17.14.3. I think I check these things most daily. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to plug in the internet here. I'm then going to connect an optical connector, such as one of these, into this socket here, and then connect it to current infrastructure that we've got using another optical connector. So there'll be, uh, this is going to be into one of the uh, sockets. This will be into, let's say, an adjacent microtech connected with an optical SFP plus. So the, the links between the microtechs will be 10 gigabits. 
But I'm afraid to say I, I've given up on, on fully 10 gigabit in the house. We're going to go to 2.5 gigabits. Okay, I will feed back as to whether it has worked or whether this unit will have to be relegated to a, a more menial task and not be the boundary router with quite a few firewall rules to stop people spamming and trying to overrun us and hack in. Thank you for watching.